Good morning friends, welcome back to a new video. We're currently just on the border between Germany and Austria. I know we say this a lot, but this time we're actually on the border. So we're in this small town called Ebbs, very picturesque, beautiful town, and that over there, just over the river, is Germany. So a lot of you have been asking in regards to money, and today's video we're gonna go through how expensive is van life in Europe. And by the way, I actually had a long walk already in that direction because the drone battery decided to fail on me this morning. But don't worry, we got it back. So I'd like to start off by saying that van life can be as expensive as you want it to be. Now, we've been living in our van for nearly two years now. So what I've done, I've worked out like an average cost per month so that I can go through everything with you item by item. And that way you can get an idea of how much van life really costs in Europe. And keep in mind, you then just have to take these uh, figures and maybe adjust them to yourself because it doesn't mean that you will spend the same that we spend. It's very seasonal as well which means that in summer there's some things that we spend more money on like fuel because we travel a bit more and there's less things that we spend money on like for example heating which then we make up for in winter because we spend a lot. Now what I've done I've worked out the average cost for the whole year and that way we can give you a monthly breakdown of all the items. Starting off with one of our main expenses fuel and especially in the last year it's been quite expensive for us. So fuel prices in Central Europe are varying quite a lot at the moment so we're paying special attention and when I see a cheap price we go and fill up. It's varying between around 1 euro 80 and 2 euro 10 per litre. So very much expensive from when we started off van life it was about 140 I think here in Europe so very big difference and on average, we spend 400 euros per month on diesel. In this amount, we've also included tolls. So I would say on diesel, we fill up twice a month on average, and then the remaining of the amount is on tolls. Now, in regards to tolls, you have some countries like Austria and Slovenia, Switzerland, where you buy a vignette, which can be like for a week or two months or one year. And then you have other countries like France and Italy, where you just pay as you go. Again, there are some months where we're traveling quite a lot, Whereas like this month, for example, we've been very quiet here in Germany, just moving along slowly and we haven't really spent much. Same goes for diesel. This month, we haven't spent anywhere close to 400 euros. In the previous months, when we did much longer road trips, like in Switzerland and back in Turkey, in those months, we spent nearly double. So it averages out around 400 euros per month and that's for diesel and tolls. They're actually setting up something for an event today I think so we're gonna have to leave but oh my god what a beautiful view of the mountains in front of me so we're currently filling up the LPG around twice a week at the moment but it is because we're in winter in summertime the LPG lasts us for about three weeks, I'd like to say, so it's much cheaper. In winter, we're spending around 180 euros, 190 euros every month, and in summertime, it's much cheaper, it's like 30 euros max. So if we average that out across the year, because obviously in the shoulder months, it's somewhere in between, I would say we average about 100 euros per month on LPG. And that's only because we stay kind of close by the mountains in the winter period. If you're staying, I don't know, like somewhere like Spain or Croatia or Turkey maybe. Uh, my bet is that it'll be much cheaper. Now we also have a second gas bottle as well, but we kind of use that as a spare because it costs a bit more uh, to fill up or to change. So this place we're at now is actually called a Stellplatz here in Germany and there's quite a lot of them throughout Europe. I know in France they're called Airs and in Italy they're called Sostas. We also found quite a few ones in Slovenia as well which were free. Now not all of these areas are free of charge. This one for example here is 8 euros for 24 hours which is not too bad but again we normally find the free ones when we can. It's just that in this area 
it wasn't really worth driving two hours to get to one of the free ones. So we're just gonna use this one to recharge. And these places basically have all the services. You've got the drain, gray water disposal. There's a toilet disposal here. There's a water facility, which is sometimes free of charge. This one is one euro to fill the tank. And there's also several electric sockets where you can pay and get the electric. This one is actually in a residential area, very quiet street, but you'll find these cell plastics all in different areas. And sometimes they're a good starting point for some really nice hikes. Now we come to these places when we need to recharge our batteries, because keep in mind if we're editing the videos, charging our camera batteries and everything, especially in winter, the batteries do go down. And obviously once or twice a week, we need to empty the toilet and empty the drain. So we always look out for these places. If there's not one in the area, we then have to go to a campsite for one night, or sometimes they even just let us use the services for a cheaper price, um, just like for a few hours. Altogether, in regards to general parking, campsites that we use, and places like this where you have to put in the money for the electric and water, we would spend roughly about 150 euros per month. A bit more in winter because we don't have so much sun. So I would say we spend about 200 euros in winter and about 100 euros in summer. And that's everything, including parking as well. So let's average that out about 150 euros per month. So I'm only a few minutes away from our park up. And look at this river, absolutely beautiful. There's like this pathway that goes along it and we really love exploring places like this. This is just a small town here on the border of Germany. It's called Kiefersfelden. But as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the Stellplatz and places where you can park up, they have the nearby beauty. And it's good to just explore out in these not so well-known European towns. I can just imagine how beautiful this place is in summer. To be honest, this is what we normally do in regards to entertainment, free stuff which you can do in nature. Sometimes you have to pay like a fee to see an attraction or something. And I averaged it out to about 50 euros per month in regards to entertainment, activities, and maybe entrance fees. Keep in mind that sometimes we get to do some cool activities through my work, which is awesome. But apart from that, we don't really spend much in regards to entertainment. I'm just gonna head back to the van now because I'm feeling cold. Holly, say hello to our friends. Oh, that's better. So this is another big one, supermarket. So food, drink, and toiletries. So it's obviously for me, Charlene, and this one here, Holly. Now, we do our shopping from a variety of different supermarkets, which has its positives and negatives. The positives being you can try different food from time to time. And the negative being that sometimes you're a bit lost on what to buy and you have to try kind of new products, which sometimes are not too good. We try to buy some fresh and local produce, as well as some other stuff which we can just cook up easy when we're on the go. So 450 euros for food, drink and toiletries, and that's for the three of us. Phone and internet is another big one. We work on the go, so obviously we need to be connected most of the time. We have two contracts at the moment. One is with Epic, which was previously Vodafone, and that gives us 90 gigabytes internet in Europe. And then we've also got another one with a Maltese company, which gives us 40 additional gigabytes. Now, apart from that, we sometimes have to buy SIM cards, like when we went to Turkey. And even here in Europe, sometimes we buy like an unlimited SIM, when we need to use the internet quite a lot for one month. And those normally cost anything between 20 to 40 euros a month. Altogether, we spend around 150 euros per month on phones and internet. We forgot the laundry. Forgot to mention, the only downside here is that a train passes from right next to us. So laundry, yeah, we spend around 50 euros per month on laundry. We go and do it every two or three weeks, roughly. And there's loads of laundrettes across uh, Europe. We find them on Park for Night or even just on Google Maps. And they normally charge around like seven euros for a load. Obviously, living in our van, we normally need to dry them as well. In summer, we sometimes wash some small stuff, but generally speaking, 99% of the washing is done at the laundrettes. Ain't that right? So we have done everything in regards to monthly expenses. And so far, we're at a grand total of 1,000 350 euros per month, which sounds about right. But we can't stop here because there are some other expenses as well, which are not monthly, 
but are pretty costly. So we kind of have to average them out as well. So we've got insurance and breakdown cover, which cover us practically worldwide. We pay that once a year and it works out to 100 euros per month, which I think is really good as it covers us both for the van from a driving aspect and also covers up to a certain amount of possessions if God forbid we ever had a break in. And finally, a few other big expenses, which we can't forget. I've put these down like as others because we've got repairs on the van, which can be quite costly. And obviously like vet bills, um, injections for Holly, dentists for us as well, uh, doctor appointments and stuff like that. And with this one, I thought it was very important that we budget it into our monthly costs because although we don't do this monthly and sometimes you could not spend anything for like six months when you do it is quite expensive since we've been living in the van we've spent eight thousand euros on repairs and services so it's quite important to budget this in to the monthly costs i know depending on the van you have it might be cheaper but on the motorhomes especially they're quite costly when something goes and we've changed the clutch we've changed both the leisure batteries We've had some odd jobs done here and there. To be honest, like we've had nothing, no complaints at all with the engine. It's been perfect. When you add up these little things, even the heater as well, we had to fix at one point and the yearly services, change of oil, new tires, uh, brakes, they add up. So very important to budget this in if you're doing a long-term trip. If you're going on a short trip, then maybe you don't have to worry about this if you're lucky. Um, and yeah, in regards to vets, doctors and dentists again we don't really do that often but when it does come sometimes it might be expensive it's something which you have to account for as well so i've added all those in total up to around 400 euros per month as i mentioned most months would spend zero but then when it does come you might have to pay a couple of thousand euros just in one month and it makes up for the other months believe me so with this extra 400 euros and the insurance and breakdown that takes us to a grand total of 1,850 euros per month for our van life in Europe. So that's me, Charlene and Holly. And I think it's a clear representation of what we would spend on average. Although, as I mentioned already, not all months are the same. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Something a bit different, a bit more informative. Hopefully with this information, you could go and make your calculations if you're interested in starting van life. If not, maybe you just found it interesting and learnt something new about us today. We'll see you next week now for a normal vlog. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.